All right. I am live on Facebook. What's up, y'all? PDT here. Give everybody a few minutes to come on because we're going to start right at 2.30. Got a hot prophetic word for you. I mean, it's hot, too. It's hot. It's right now hot. So can't wait to share it with you. Can't wait to release it. Praise God for it. And you see the title uh, already. So you have uh, some kind of idea as to what we're going to be talking about. So we're going to give everybody a few minutes to come on. And uh, so I got to alert my peeps. Why does everything always run slow when I'm trying to trying to do something prophetic? I know. <laughs> uh. Okay. Let folks know, let folks know. Let folks know, let folks know. Let folks know, let folks know. Okay. All right. 2.30? So we're going to start because I like to be on time. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you thanking you for today. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for another chance to hear from you, oh God. Mm. We don't want to take that for granted because our eyes could be blinded and our ears could be dull and we could not have anything. So we thank you, God. We thank you. We praise you. We thank you, oh God. So, Lord, I must decrease so you must increase, Lord. So I crucify myself. Lord, move me out of the way so you can speak through me, oh God. Forgive me. Wash me clean and breathe through me, oh God, so that what is said is what you want said, that you might be glorified in all things, that the saints might be edified and that the demons might be terrified and unbelievers might be challenged to hear you and believe you and obey you. And signs and wonders and miracles shall follow this very prophetic word. I declare it and decree it, and I pray in the name of Jesus. We're looking for you to do great things. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Today's live prophetic word is chains. Today's live prophetic word is chains. Okay? What do I mean by chains? Well, you know what a chain is. This is a chain. This is a necklace. But also, when you think of the context of chains, you can think of shackles. Shackles are a yoke that can be put around your neck. Shackles like uh, handcuffs or slave chains, shackles around your feet. And sometimes they put a bar of wood on the chains to keep your feet apart or keep your feet locked in. Okay. So normally when we change something, we're trying to rest restrain it. We're trying to restrict it. We're trying to hold it in place. We're trying to possess it. We're trying to control it. We're trying to tie it down. Normally that's what happens with a chain. So... What is the Holy Ghost saying to us today? Well, for that, we're going to need to go to our scriptures. Okay. So one of the scriptures you're very, very well, actually, you're probably familiar with both of them, but we're going to get some, I want to have mercy, these kids playing in the street, jumping in the street in front of cars, Lord Jesus. Okay. Uh, so we're going to get some new insight from what the Lord has to say. Okay. All right, our first scripture is, we're going to read the book of Acts, and we're going to read chapter 16, okay? Um, we're going to start with verse 20, and we're going to go through verse 26. Verse 20, Acts, so Acts chapter 16, verses 20 through 26. Now, if you don't know anything about the book of Acts, uh, briefly, because you heard me say this before, the book of Acts is basically what happens after Jesus leaves. 
So after Jesus rises from the dead, three days after he was crucified, he stayed on earth 40 more days, preparing all the people that were following him for what was coming next. And what was coming next was the day of Pentecost and the Holy Spirit of God coming down out of heaven and actually indwelling man. Because under the old covenant, the Holy Spirit would come upon people. But under the new covenant, because the blood of Jesus has been shed and the veil in the temple has been rent, that means there's no more separation between man and God because your sins have been paid for through Jesus. But that's why you don't get the benefit of that unless you accept Jesus. But all those that had accepted and believed on Jesus were getting prepared for the spirit of God to come down on the day of Pentecost and to actually indwell us, to empower us and to stay with us. So that uh, the Lord said that that he knew that his followers didn't want him to leave. So he wasn't going to leave us alone. He wasn't going to leave us orphans in this world, but rather he was going to send the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost would be just like Jesus was here. That's what that means. So the Holy Spirit of God is here to guide us into all truth, into righteousness, to convict us of sin, to empower us, to do everything that Jesus would do if he was still here in person as a man. That's what the Spirit of God is here to do. So the book of Acts is about what happened when that happened, because that's how what we call the church age started. That's how the church was born. And so the book of Acts was about those early days after the Holy Ghost fell and what they did. OK. All right. So just to give you some context. So we're going to read Acts chapter 16. I'm reading out of the NIV version and I'm reading verses 20 through 26. They brought them, and the them there is talking about Paul and Silas. They brought them, Paul and Silas, before the magistrates and said, these men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. What Paul and Silas had done is they had cast a demon, they had cast an unclean spirit out of this girl who was following them around and crying out behind them. So... Mm, they cast that spirit out. Uh, the crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged or beaten, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. That's the wood that comes down over your feet or your hands to hold you in place. That's a stock, or sometimes you see people hanging with their heads and their hands up. Those are stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. As always, those verses are action packed, but I'm going to go with the top because remember, when you're reading the scripture, remember the thing you always want to know is how does that apply to me? You know, we, we can read what it says in the Bible, but the question then becomes, how does that apply to my life? OK, what am I supposed to be doing with that? OK, so with that in mind, verse 20, they brought them before the magistrates and said, these men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. Now, how we got away from this message in the church, I do not know, but you're going to be persecuted. You're going to be persecuted. That persecution does not look the same for everybody, but you're going to have enemies. You're going to have people that stand against what you stand for. And especially if you're walking around doing anything uh, in the flow of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the power of the Holy Spirit. If you're speaking in tongues, if you're casting out demons, if you're breaking unclean spirits off of people, remember that's all the Lord did with his public ministry. And in the end, they were talking about crucify him, crucify him. If you're opening blinded eyes, if you're raising people from the dead, if you're laying hands on women that have been infertile and all of a sudden uh, you get a prophetic word that they can have kids. Um, anytime you break the power of darkness, Anytime you break a chain that was from the devil, anytime you're dealing with a stronghold or a, a fortified place that Satan has set up, a place where he's uh, built a castle, 
become comfortable and set up a spot to attack you from. Whenever you're breaking up a stronghold, you're going to get pushed back. You're going to get pushed back in the spirit from the unclean spirits themselves, and you're going to get pushed back in the natural from the people that stand against what you stand for, people that are the enemies of the Lord. Okay, so again, nothing wrong with cars, nothing wrong with houses, nothing wrong with private airplanes, nothing wrong with prosperity. We're supposed to preach that. That's a part of our inheritance, too. But along with that, you're going to have enemies. The Lord said that anything that you give up for his kingdom, you're going to receive now in this life a hundredfold with persecutions. God said with persecutions, with persecutions, with persecutions. OK, that's just as much a part of it. But God also said did not be afraid. He said, don't be afraid because he's overcome the world. And we're going to see how they overcome in this passage. But the first thing we're trying to learn here is not to be surprised that it happens. Of course, it's going to happen, okay? Because the unclean spirits are going to try to give you some pushback, some backlash in the spiritual realm, and wicked people, people that are unbelievers, people that are against you, are going to give you some backlash, some pushback in the natural, okay? You can speak against it and you can stand against it, but persecution is still going to happen because the Lord said it was. The Lord said when you get your hundredfold return in this life for his kingdom, it come with persecutions. OK. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. The crowd joined in. We know a little something about that with can cancel culture, don't we? We know what it's like nowadays to be dealing with uh, what we call a pile on. Because what happens now is it's like due process is gone in America. And, and what we're supposed to have is. You're supposed to have a right to face your accusers. You're supposed to have a right to mount a defense. And you're supposed to have a right to a speedy and a fair trial. In America, that's what we call due process. We don't have that anymore. Now we have crowd attacks in the Bible. So it's not new. You can see it here in the scripture. The crowd joined in the attack. Okay. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas. And the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. OK. Huh. Sometimes in life, we've been in situations where we've been stripped and beaten. Do you know? Hey, there's Prophet Ashima. Hey there. For this. Shiva. Sometimes in life. We have been stripped and beaten. You know what? I did not even put my subject on. There's my subject. And right now I'm reading out of Acts 16. I'm going to put this in the chat, 20 through 26. Okay? Okay? I'm reading out of Acts 16, 20 through 26, and I'm in the NIV. Okay? Sometimes in life, you get stripped and you get beaten in the cause of following Christ. What would you do if you've been in a situation? Because we've all been in situations like that. OK, where you've been stripped and you've been beaten, stripped of what? Sometimes you're stripped of your dignity. Sometimes you're stripped of your reputation. Sometimes you're stripped of money. Sometimes you're literally physically stripped of your clothes like the Lord was. I myself am a fire survivor. For those of you that don't know that part of my testimony, me and my son were in a fire and everything we had burned to the ground. And we woke up in the middle of that fire. It was already blazing on a Saturday morning. So. I say like Dr. Jasmine Schoolart, you don't know what I've been through because I don't look like what I've been through. But I and me and my son are the survivors of a house fire. I'm talking about them flames is right here, 13 feet high, okay? And we stood outside once we got outside. It was a miracle because nobody in the building was hurt. And some people got out 15 to 20 minutes after we did. Some people came out with nothing but their bed sheets on and, and their night clothes. It was a miracle nobody died in that blaze. This one, uh, one couple, the one of the struts, one of the beams had broken through their ceiling and split their bed. One of them, them, them struts, them beams that hold up the building. It's an absolute miracle that nobody died in that fire. But me and my son survived because the Lord was with us. But I've been in a situation where I had to stand outside for an hour and a half and watch everything I own burn to the ground. I kid you not. I kid you not. So that's what I mean when I say sometimes in life, become in situations where we get stripped and we get beaten. And sometimes, 
you weren't doing anything but what the Lord wanted you to do. And you were met with strippings and beatings and crowd attacks and the crowd jumped on you. This is particularly true for anybody that walks in the prophetic. When you start walking in the prophetic, when you start praying in tongues in public, when you develop your prayer language, and when you go into intercession, you got to remember that somebody has to intercede for you until you get it. What does that mean? That means when you're not walking with God the way you're supposed to, somebody comes before God on your behalf and pleads the blood of Jesus and asks God to have mercy on you until you get it. For people that don't have that operating in their life, that's why some Christians end up dying early because the devil caught you out there uncovered. Okay, and that happens more often than Christians like to admit that. Remember that God never does anything without a purpose. So if the Lord is pushing you to intercede for somebody, there's a reason for that, because somebody needs to come before him and ask for mercy and ask for the blood of Jesus to cover them and their sins and their life, because mercy has to cover you until you get it and you can repent and then make the right choices. And if you are out there uncovered against the devil, that is how some Christians get taken out early. You see that? So particularly if you walk in the prophetic, you speak in tongues, you got a prayer language, you got an intercessory ministry, you're always praying for others. You can see things in the spirit. You can hear things in the spirit. There's all kinds of ways that the Lord can get a prophetic word to you because God doesn't deal with everybody the same way. God deals with some people in dreams. You get a dream and they happen. Sometimes you hear things, sometimes you see things, sometimes you get a burden in your heart that you can't let go of. But one way or another, particularly if you walk in the prophetic, you're going to get pushed back. And that's why I've discovered a lot of people don't want to get in the prophetic because people are going to look at you like you're crazy. Yes, they will. So what? God never said that the way he does things has to look like the way we do things. That's where people get confused. A heavenly language, a prayer language, intercession, the blood of Jesus, the many full grace of the prophetic. That's heavenly stuff. That don't have to look like what it looked like down here. That's where people get confused. And so you're going to have to let go of worrying about how you look to other people if you're going to follow Christ. You can't have both of them. You got to pick one. Either you're going to be worried about what man say, or you're going to be worried about what God say, but you can't have both of them. You cannot. Okay. So Paul and Silas were stripped and beaten because they cast an unclean spirit out of this girl. And this girl had a spirit of divination. And to translate into today, it was like, it'd be like being a psychic. And people were coming in for tarot card readings or psychic readings. And they were paying these men because of this girl's using her spirit of divination. Paul and Silas cast that divination spirit out that girl. And all of a sudden, the men couldn't make money anymore. And then they had Paul and Silas arrested. That's what happened. That's the backstory. Okay. Verse 23, after they had been severely flogged, flogged also means beaten. They had been severely beaten. They were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. They had been severely beaten. They were thrown into prison, beating, incarceration, and careful guarding. Because that's what the devil will always do. That's what wicked people will always try to do. They will try to incarcerate you in some way. Like Dr. King went to actual jail like Jesus was actually arrested, like Apostle Paul went to actual jail. Sometimes it's financial jail. Sometimes it's social jail. That's what cancel culture is about. Them trying to shut you down, drown out your voice, okay? But do you see that they were severely beaten, they were incarcerated, and then they were guards were set up? Why is that so important? Because in Psalm 23, it says, he, he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I know we want situations all the time where God leads us around our enemies. Sometimes, however, you got to go through your enemies. Sometimes God's going to deliver you from them. Sometimes God's going to deliver you in the midst of them. But that's why we're supposed to read the scriptures, because we should not be surprised by these things happening. That's what I mean. Sometimes when God gives you a prophetic revelation, you make a mistake and you do like Joseph and you run your mouth to your family, you run your mouth to the wrong people. In other words, the Lord showed you something, but he didn't tell you to tell anybody. But you did like 17-year-old Joseph, you went and ran your mouth and you started talking about your dreams and your vision, what you saw, and your family or your relatives or somebody got so mad, they sold you out. 
that's what happened to Joseph. They got so mad because God had had given you a vision of your future blessing. And that's why some of y'all are estranged from, from some of your family members right now. Because you ran your mouth about your prophetic dream and they got so mad they cast you out. This many times is what happens along the way. Okay? So, when he received these orders, verse 24, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. In the inner cell, they were deep in the prison. They weren't in the outer cells. They were in the inner cells and fastened. Their feet were fastened. So in other words, Paul and Silas couldn't have been beaten anymore without dying. They were put as deep in the prison as they could get. Their feet were held by stocks and they were guarded. Okay, that's the efforts of the enemy and wicked people trying to shut you down. And that's why some of y'all looking at me right now, that's why you've had such a hard time in life. You've had such a hard time in life because the enemy has been trying to beat you, strip you, incarcerate you, humiliate you, and put heavy guards around you and fasten your feet, uh, uh, restrict you, okay, as hard as he could. But we're going to keep reading because there's something to learn in this. <clears throat> Verse 25, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Stop right there. Why is that significant? Those of you that have an intercessory prayer life know that when you want to talk to the Lord, the best environment to talk to God in is when it's quiet. That's why 12, midnight to 4 in the morning, or midnight to six in the morning. Ain't no witching hour, it's a praying hour. If you wanna to talk to the Lord, you gotta get quiet. You gotta get quiet because many times God responds with a still small voice. Many times the touch of his Holy Spirit is so gentle until if you're not quiet, you're gonna miss it. Because the Holy Ghost is not loud. If you get to the point where the Spirit of God is raising his voice, that means you have not been listening because the Holy Ghost is not loud. So it's significant that they were praying in the middle of the night because if you've been up anywhere between midnight and two or midnight and four, the air is still. I can't explain it. I just know it's true. It's not like it is during the hustle and the bustle of the day. It's not like it is during nine to five or eight to six. It's not like that. But somewhere between midnight and two and midnight and four, the air is still. And that's the time where you want to get alone somewhere with the Lord so you can be sensitive to what the Holy Ghost is saying. That's why the Bible mentions about midnight they were praying. Some of y'all, sometimes, because I just went through something like this, sometimes we get too busy and God has to slow us down and God got to tell you, you got to spend your quiet time with me, okay? About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Why is that important? Because they weren't just praying, they were worshiping. One more time, they weren't just praying, they were worshiping. They weren't just praying, they were worshiping. And you've got to make worship a part of your time with God, just like your prayer. You don't come into God's presence and just ask for stuff. You come into God's presence and praise him, praise him for who he is and praise him for what he's already done. There's a way to approach the throne. You don't just always come before God with your hand out talking about do this for me. So they were praying and singing in the quietness of the night and the other prisoners were listening to them. Other people heard their prayers and their songs. And I have discovered that even when people don't say anything, if they know you're a believer and they see you pray and they see you uh, fasting and they see you speaking in tongues and they see you worshiping, they'll be listening. They may not say anything, but they'll be listening. This says suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. And that's what I wanted to key in on. I've been trying to get to this verse. The first word of, of verse 26 is suddenly. Do you understand what that means? What that means is that you can't be surprised if God just changes your situation like that. That's one of the reason, reasons, my brothers and my sisters, that we have to walk in the spirit. One of the reasons that you have to stay full of the Holy Ghost is because you don't know when and how 
God's going to answer, but it might be suddenly. It might be a situation where the Lord just show up. Okay? And that's why you have to stay in the spirit. I can't stress that enough. That's why you hear me teach all the time on Matthew 25 about the wise virgins and the foolish virgins, about the foolish virgins are Christians that don't stay, uh, don't stay spirit filled. So they'll be out somewhere at Walmart trying to buy the Holy Ghost. And those that do stay spirit filled are the wise virgins that keep their lamps trimmed and burning. Oil in the Bible is always a sign of the Holy Ghost. So to keep your lamp trimmed and burning means you stay full of the Holy Ghost. So whenever the Lord shows up, you're ready to go. That's what that means. So verse 26, the first word is suddenly. Suddenly, that means it's entirely possible at any point in your life, God could just turn your entire situation around, but you have to be ready for it. What would you do if God was ready to turn your situation around, but you're not ready? Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake. Stop. <laughs> a violent earthquake. Those men had suffered violence and God answered with violence. Did you notice that? Did you notice that Paul and Silas did not have to raise their hand because God raised his hand? Did you know that? Did you know that if people have done violence against you, did you know that if people have tried to bring things down on your own head, do you know that God can answer them with what they did to you? Did you know that? Suddenly, that's right, Prophet Sheila, suddenly, did you know? that because some of y'all listen to me right now and some of y'all that are going to be watching on the replay you've been th been through some stuff that haven't been right did you know that if they have been violent with you the bible says there was such a violent such a violent earthquake such a violent god answered their violence with violence did you notice that i don't know how people miss that where people got this idea that the lord is some type of pacifist that the lord is some type of wimp that the Lord is some type of, I don't know where people got that idea from. I have some ideas, but this idea that somehow that you just have to take stuff and God's not going to deliver you or being a Christian is about how much you can forgive because, you know, we've seen so much gun violence and it seems like they're always rushing to families. Well, forgive, forgive, forgive. Yeah, I stopped by to tell you, God can answer their violence with violence. That's in the Bible. And the Bible says that there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Stop. What does that mean? That means that God put his hand underneath everything that was in that jail and tore it up. God put his hand underneath everything that that jail was built on and tore it up. I'm going to say that one more time. God took his mighty hand, stuck his hand underneath everything that jail was built on and tore it up. Do you understand? You understand what that means? That means that even if they beat you, even if they arrest you, even if they put you in the inner cell, even if they put your hands and your feet in the stocks, everything they try to do with you, God can reach underneath it and shake it so hard that the very foundation has been uprooted. What do you think happened to America in 2020? The stock market, just uh, movie theaters, restaurants, businesses that we had known and been counting on for, you know, decades, some cases over a hundred years. And now some of those industries are never going to be the same. They're never going to be the same because it doesn't matter what we do or what we think or what wicked or evil people do. God can take his mighty hand and stick it underneath the prison and shake it so hard until the whole foundation come loose. Okay. Here come the next part of the verse. It's still verse 26. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. At once, God can deliver you at once. God can deliver you at once. I know sometimes we get worried because it looked like the Lord let the enemy stack the deck against you. But he's allowing that so that when the deliverance comes, he can demonstrate his power. Because remember, the Lord did the same thing with Pharaoh in Egypt. Now, can you see that God does not change from Old Testament to New Testament? God doesn't change. So away with this teaching that told you that being a Christian was about how much suffering you could take and still keep smiling. That's not what this verse is teaching. They, this happened. The Holy Ghost did the same thing for Paul and Silas 
that Jehovah did for Moses and Pharaoh in Israel. No matter what the Egyptians did, God had a counter and his counter was greater than what the Egyptians were doing and their false gods. So the Bible says at once, at once, uh, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Now, what are we supposed to get out of that? I stopped by to tell you this, that when God delivers you, it's not going to just be you. Once again, the scripture says that everybody's doors flew open. Do you know what that means? That means that even unbelievers are going to see and get a chance to be free because in God delivering you is going to show his power to them. That's why God allows it. That's right, Sister Sheila. So God gets the glory. That's why you don't have to raise your hand because God's going to raise his hand. But when God does it that way, that means that unbelievers get a chance to see that your God is God. And so all the prison doors came up and not just Paul and Silas. That means that when God delivers you, there's going to be people around you that get delivered. You understand that? People around you are going to get delivered. And then it says that everyone's chains came off. Everyone, not just Paul and Silas's chains. Do you understand that means that when you get financial deliverance, other people are going to get out of debt too because of your blessing? When you get Holy Ghost deliverance, other people get it. Let me tell you what that looks like. When the spirit of God fall on, falls on someone that's not afraid to praise him, they will say something that sets you free. They will give you a prophetic word that breaks something off your life. Did you know that? When the Holy Ghost falls and they break out in prayer and praise, something come because that happens with my sister all the time. My sister's a prophetess too. When the spirit of God falls on my sister, she speaks in tongues and she speaks with a very strong voice. My sister has dropped nuggets of wisdom that break generational curses. My sister says stuff sometimes that when she just says a word and entire lives change like that. So that's what I mean when I say when God is setting up this scenario, when you get delivered, it's not going to be just you. Okay, sis, I see you. Technical issues. Okay. I see you, sis. Okay. Cool. Thanks for letting me know. It's not going to be just you. 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 When God delivers you, everybody's chain is going to fall off. And that's why we got to be careful to give God the glory. We don't take any glory for ourselves. Okay. We give the glory to the Lord because the Lord is the one that made the deliverance. The Lord is the one that caused that to happen. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to read this other verse. This other verse is very familiar, but I'm going to, uh, hopefully the spirit of God is going to give us some new understanding on it. Okay. This is the last verse I'm going to read. Then we'll be through. I'm going to read Isaiah 10 and 27. Isaiah 10 and 27. Some of you are already very familiar with this verse. We're going to read it in several different translations. Isaiah is in the Old Testament. Isaiah is a major prophet of the Old Testament. Remember, major prophets means that their books were long. Minor prophets mean they have shorter books, three, four, and five chapters. Major prophets have 50, 60 chapters. Minor prophets does not mean their message was less important. It just means their books were smaller. That's all. So we're going to read Isaiah, a major prophet in the Old Testament, chapter 10, verse 27, out of several translations. New International Version. In that day, their burden will be lifted from your shoulders, their yoke from your neck. The yoke will be broken because you have grown so fat. New Living Translation. In that day, the Lord will end the bondage of his people. He will break the yoke of slavery and lift it from their shoulders. English Standard Version. And in that day, his burden will depart from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck. And the yoke will be broken because of the fat. Berean Study Bible. On that day, the burden will be lifted from your shoulders and the yoke from your neck. The yoke will be broken because your neck will be too large. Here comes the King James Version. This is the one you're familiar with. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Now, I've heard that Christian phrase, the anointing destroys the yoke, since I was a teenager. What does it actually mean from scripture? Because that's the verse it's talking about. What does Isaiah 10 and 27 actually mean? Okay. The anointing, when you go into the Hebrew, it's talking about oil. It's talking about fatness. It's talking about prosperity, thickness, and abundance. 
it's talking about, that's why many of the translations say fatness. It's talking about increase and enlarging you. So what that verse is actually saying is that when your enemies had you, when the enemies of Israel had their yoke upon their neck, in that day where the Lord ends the bondage, what the, the Bible is actually saying is, is that your abundance and your increase and your growth and your enlargement will become so great that it snaps the yoke off of your neck. So in other words, you increase so much, you become so fat and rich and thick with oil and increase, you become so much more than you were that that's what breaks the restrictions off of your life. So when you hear that phrase, the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing, King James uses the word anointing, but the other translations use the word fatness. What that's talking about is your personal increase. What, so, so to give you a practical example, what that means is if you had a cow or an ox and it was tied up with a yoke to keep it in line to plow the fields, and that ox started eating so much grass until it grew so big, until his neck got so big, until it snapped off the brace. That's what that verse means. The yoke shall be destroyed because of anointing. That's what that means. So in terms of our subject change, what the Lord is saying there is that he's going to give you so much increase that it snaps the yoke of debt out of your life. He's going to give you so, such a strong anointing until it delivers you from the fear of man. I have felt Jeremiah fire. I don't care what anybody says. It's real. I have felt it where the prophetic word has been on me so strong and I didn't want to open my mouth and I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I couldn't breathe because I was just so much fire, so much power on me until I surrendered and opened my mouth and released the word of the Lord like I was supposed to. I have felt that what Jeremiah was talking about that fire showed up in my bones. And when God, God can give you such a strong prophetic word until the very power of the word itself delivers you from the fear of man. In other words, you don't care who believes it. You don't care whether they like you or not. You don't care what they think of you because the power of God is so strong until when that word come out, it breaks all fear off of you, okay? God can give you a relationship where somebody is a breath of fresh air. God can give you new thoughts. Psalm 23 says, Psalm 23, 3 says he restores my soul. God can bring you back to a version of you that wasn't damaged. I'm going to say that one more time. When the Bible says he restores my soul, what happens to us as we live this life is we get damaged, we get scars, we get a lot of things, okay? Because there's trouble in this world. There's no way around it. That's because of the sin curse of Adam. But when God says he'll restore your soul, what that means is that God can reset your soul to a point where you were happy, like when you were a little kid, before you got scarred, before you got divorced, before they told you you weren't black enough, before they beat you up on the playground, before your sister stole your boyfriend, before the enemies cussed you out, before somebody put you on blast, before all that, before you got scarred, before you got hurt. Think back when you were a little kid, little, little, little kid. Think about running around and being happy, not really being self-conscious. Think about enjoying your life. Think about before you lost your innocence. Think about before you went through all the stuff that you went through. God can take you back to that. That's what that means. Or that's one experience of that. God can take you back to where you were happy again, like you were when you were a kid. Before all that bad stuff happened, because some people go through a divorce and they get so bitter, they never love again. And some people go through financial reversal and they get so broken by it that they lose optimism. They lose faith. They don't believe that God can restore your finances. Some people go through sickness, especially if you went through a long sickness. If you went through a chronic illness where you were sick for a while, that mentally and emotionally begins to weigh on you. That's why uh, you see in the New Testament when the Lord broke stuff off of people, he broke it off them right away in that same hour. They got healed in that same moment. They got well because chronic illness tends to break you down. Remember the woman that was bent over in the temple and the Lord said Satan bound her for 37, 38 years and she had on her back. And the Lord said the devil bound her for 37 years. The Lord healed her in a moment of time. That woman stood straight up. No hump on her back because if you are dealing with chronic medical issues, that weighs on your wallet, that weighs on your mind, and that weighs on your soul. Well, God is able 
to restore, to reset your soul to the point where you can live and laugh and love again, like all that stuff never happened. You see that? So God can give you such a burst of life in your soul and your spirit till all of that ugliness just break off you. I stopped by to tell you that bad memories don't have to cage you. You do not have to stay in jail or what happened to you. If you notice, what we do sometimes is we keep rehearsing what happened to us. You keep rehearsing. You keep singing your They Did Me Wrong song. You keep rehearsing what happened to you. I stopped by to tell you, stop rehearsing what happened to you. Start rehearsing the word, Psalm 23 and 3, that he restores my soul, that the yoke can be destroyed because of the fatness. God can give me so much increase. Acts 16 that even if they put me deep into jail and put my feet in stocks, God is able to violently shake the foundation of whatever prison they put me in. And God is able to make all the doors open. He won't just let me out. He'll let the people around me out. You see that? All right. That's our prophetic word for today. Oh, hello, uh, Fitzgerald. Hello, I see you. God bless you. That's our prophetic word for today. It's chains. Now, <clears throat> those of you that know anything about the prophetic and know anything about the Holy Ghost, you know this one thing, that the Spirit of God does not waste his words. So you have to receive what the Holy Ghost is saying to apply it in your life. Okay, I'm going to say that one more time. You got to receive it to apply it in your life. That's what a lot of people don't understand. This is not magic. It's not magic. This is faith. You've got to believe it. If you hear the word of God, but you don't believe it, it's not going to do you any good. For, for all this, what you heard me say in this last 40 minutes to apply to your life, you have to believe it. You have to receive it into your life. And the way to do that is by confession, to say it. So if you want this deliverance to manifest in your life, start doing like Paul and Silas and pray and praise God in the quiet of the night and start saying that God is going to violently, right, forgive and let go, you'll be blessed. That's right. Say God is going to violently shake my prison. God is going to shake the foundation. The prison that the devil tried to put me in, God's going to shake it at his foundation violently. He's going to shake it violently and get me out. That God's going to open the doors, my prison bars. God is going to set me free from the chains. Start confessing it. That's how you get it to manifest in your life. When I was little, I used to hear people say all these things about what the Lord would do, but they never told me how. How do you get it in your life? And the way you get it in your life is what I'm telling you now. You have to HBO, hear, believe, and obey. You hear the word of God, you believe the word of God, you do what the word says. Hear, believe, and obey. That's how you get this message, this teaching on chains to show up in your life so God can break you out of those chains. You don't have to be sick. 10 more years, you don't have to be broke 10 more years, you don't have to be by yourself if you don't want to be, if you want to be single that's cool, you don't want to be, you don't have to go no whole nother decade in bondage in your body in your finances, in your relationships in your mind, in your memories, you don't have to God can give you such a powerful deliverance until it shakes the very foundation of everything that the devil tried to do and sets you and all the people around you free. HBO, hear that, believe that, and obey it. If you do what they did, you're going to get what they, die, what they got. If you do what Paul and Silas did, you're going to get what Paul and Silas got. Pray and praise in the middle of the night. Confess the word and watch God move. Watch God move. He's going to add a new testimony to your arsenal when you see the Lord violently shake up everything that the devil has done and set you and everybody around you free. All right. Amen and amen. That's our prophetic word for this week. Thank you to those of you that watch me live. God bless you. And thank you to those of you that are watching the replay. Now, remember what my goal is for 2021. My goal for 2021 is to increase my reach. I'm going to put that on the screen. 2021 goal. Increase my reach. Okay. And the reason that I want to increase my reach is because whenever a prophetic word comes forth, so, amen, amen, I need to pray for people, that's right. Whenever a prophetic word comes forth, we want as many people as possible to hear it so they can hear what the Spirit is saying. So if you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen right now. If you have any prayer requests, anything you want me to pray for, put them on the screen right now. 
uh, anything you need prayer for in your body and your financial relationship, put it in the chat so I can pray for it. So remember I told you at the beginning of this year, every time I did a video, I was going to ask you to do one thing because I cannot increase my reach by myself. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. What I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to subscribe to my YouTube channel for my music. For those of you that don't know, I have a prophetic music ministry as well as um, this prophetic speaking ministry. So I put the link to the channel. Uh, if you want to look me up with hashtags, the hashtag is hashtag PDT, hashtag SOTC. The name of my prophetic music ministry is Shades of the Cross. Okay. And I've had that, some in incarnation of that band for years. Okay, so go to YouTube. I put the link in the uh, I put the link in the chat. Go to my YouTube channel, check out the music there, and subscribe to my channel. That's how I'm going to increase my reach. That's one thing I'm asking you to do. All right, so uh, I'm gonna listen to the Holy Ghost, and I'm gonna pray, uh, and then we'll close out. When you see me close my eyes and pray in tongues, when you pray in tongues, you stir up your spirit, you stir up the gifts within, and you invite folk the Holy Spirit to come take over. That's why you see me do that. All right, the Holy Ghost is saying somebody's wearing a white dress and somebody's got some type of headdress, some type of bandana or something on your head. And your fair skin, God is saying he's going to heal those kidneys. He's going to heal that pancreas. He's going to heal those organs. So don't be afraid, says the Lord, but believe, HBO. Hear me, believe me, and obey me, says God. Begin to confess your healing. Begin to believe me to move right now. And the power of God will flow through that pancreas, flow through those kidneys to give you full restoration. I uh, see somebody in red. I can't tell if it's man or woman. I see somebody in red. God is saying, you've been afraid too long. God is saying, you, your thinking is backwards. You've been afraid of the devil. You don't understand that the devil's afraid of you. What you don't understand, whoever you are in red, is that the reason there's been so much persecution in your life, because Satan's afraid of you. He does not want you to come to full power. God says, come out of your fear and start moving in faith. Start speaking my word, says the Lord. Start speaking my word, says the Lord, and watch how the demons will begin to move out your way when you start saying what I say. God said, you say what I say, you say what I say about yourself, about your life. You say what I say in a word, and God says, watch stuff start to, to bow before you as my word goes out before you like a forward shield. Some of y'all, some of y'all are dealing with 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 pests in your house, like critters, like like spiders, like squirrels, like like skunks, like like dogs in your life, like mice. God said, speak to them, rebuke them, curse them, and tell them to leave your property. Because God says, you have dominion over every four-footed beast. Remember, you have dominion over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God said, don't you let no creature mess up your living space. You curse them. You rebuke them. You tell them to leave where you live in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth the son of the true and living God. And you keep saying it until you drive them all out, says the Lord. Um, oh, yes. Okay, God says some of y'all are dealing with business and money and God says what's happening in your life is you, is turning. Uh, some of y'all got on dark blue right now. Some of y'all got on glasses. You're wearing glasses. You're listening to me. Some of y'all got on your earbuds. I'm seeing that. Some of y'all sitting in front of your computer screen. And the reason the Holy Ghost is giving me all this is because some of y'all don't believe enough. You don't understand God looking right at you. Okay? Holy Ghost is saying, those of you that are, you're dealing with a business situation that's turning, God says, I'm going to give you more money. I'm going to give you more power. I'm going to give you more influence. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is that new level, new devil. With all those increase, going to come to new persecution. So God says, I'm trying to get you ready. Because you need to be able to handle it. It's not going to do you any good, says the Lord, for me to give you increase and you can't handle it. So be patient, be wise, be careful. Do not let the enemy get an advantage over you. Don't lose your temper. 
don't, you know, move into profanity. Don't give in to, you know, race bait. Like maybe somebody's pushing you through racism and you want to tell them off. And the Lord said, don't do any of that. But hold your peace, stay sweet, stay professional, and I'll give you the victory. I'll give you more money than you imagined. The reason you're going through it is because I'm using it to prepare you. Because when you get to the next level, you're going to have influence over many. You cannot be in that position and cussing people out. You cannot be in that position, seeing racism everywhere or responding to it in kind. You cannot be in that position always flying off the handle. God said, that's why you're going through it. I'm trying to shape you and mold you so that you can handle it when I give it to you. That's why I took 13 years to get Joseph ready, because I knew I was going to put him over the economy of Egypt. I had to get him ready so he could handle it. And I'm trying to develop within you a spirit of humility that you understand that it doesn't matter how much people hate you. You don't have to hate them back. You don't have to raise your hand. I'm going to raise my hand. Haman thought he was going to hang the Jews. Haman ended up hanging on the very gallows he built to kill others. You don't have to raise your hand. You don't even have to raise your voice. Just speak the word, says the Lord. And I'm going to raise my voice. And you'll see how I shake that prison. Okay, this next one is for pastors. The Lord is saying that some of y'all are too caught up in your title. Some of y'all are too worried about the size of your congregation. You're too worried about how many people you're preaching to. That's not the point. When I walked the earth as a man, I preached to thousands. I preached to people one-on-one. -on -one. I dealt with the woman at the well. The woman at issue of blood came up behind me. I dealt with the Gadarene demoniac. I dealt with the 10 lepers. I dealt with people one-on-one, -on -one, just like I preached to 4,000 and 5,000 and fed them. It's not about the size of the crowd, says the Lord. It's not about your title. It's not about being famous. It's not about, on, it's not about being on TV. It's about doing what I told you to do. You don't know the needs of the flock better than me, says the Lord. So do what I'm telling you to do because there are needs in your congregation that you will never be aware of. There are things that people are going through that you will never know about and understand. I'm not asking you to, to know the minds and hearts of those people. I'm asking you to listen to me because I know the minds and the hearts, says the Lord, and preach what I'm telling you to preach. Preach it the way I'm telling you to preach it and preach it to whom I'm telling you to preach it to, whether that's one person or one million, because you don't know how I'm going to use the word that I give you to change a life. The woman at the well went back and became an evangelist and told everybody she knew that she met me because she discovered that I loved her unconditionally, that I knew everything about her life. I knew everything about her past and I loved her still. I could look right at her and tell her everything she'd been through. And by the very fact that I was addressing her with respect, she understood that I was saying, I know everything about you, daughter, and I love you still. And she went back and told everybody she knew that she had met me, a man that told me all things that I did. And I'm trying to tell you, says the Lord, that you don't know the impact of one life. You know, if I tell you to go preach to one person, you don't know who that person is going to turn around and affect. So just do what I'm telling you to do. Don't worry about your title. Don't worry about the size of your congregation. Don't worry about whether or not you're on TV. Don't worry about what people say about you. Don't worry about trying to be a celebrity preacher. Do what I'm telling you to do, says the Lord. Okay, there's one more. This next word is for musicians. God is saying, you need to keep your eyes on me. When I called you into the music ministry, I didn't call you for any other reason than I wanted you to serve me. There are songs I want you to write, things I want you to play and sing and do. And they're a part of my overall plan. I don't show you all the details of my overall plan because you couldn't handle them if I did show them to you. I need you to be in the place I need you to be. Some of y'all are complaining because you want to be a part of a famous ministry. You want to be a part of a big name ministry. And right now you feel like you're in obscurity. Don't nobody know who you are. And you're complaining and murmuring. But <clears throat> I have you there because there's some very specific things I want you to do. And how do you know 
that two years from now, I'm not going to blow that ministry up. How do you know that I didn't put you there so you could get there on the ground floor? So that when that ministry goes to the next level, you are right there. How do you know that? How do you know what I'm going to do for you in the future? So what I want you to do is serve me without murmuring to the musicians. I want you to serve me without complaining. I want you to serve me without worrying about where you are right now. Play unto me, dedicate your service unto me and let me worry about the, the positioning and the lifting and all that. Just play, just learn how to be faithful. All you got to do is be faithful to me. All you got to do says the Lord is be faithful to me. I made your job easy. You worrying about a whole bunch of stuff you don't have to worry about. All you got to do is be faithful to me and I'll take care as the scripture says, if you humble yourself under my mighty hand, I will lift you up in due time, says the spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Praise God for that prophetic word. All right, that's it for this week. Um, I will be back uh, Sunday, uh, next Sunday, same time, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Don't forget to go to my uh, YouTube channel and uh, like and subscribe to my music ministries uh, because I'm trying to increase my reach. What happens when you listen to prophetic music is prophetic music brings deliverance into your room, if you know that. When you listen to prophetic music, you will feel the glory of God come in the room, but deliverance will start to happen. Stuff going to start to break off you, and you're going to start to see things in the spirit that you've never seen before. So that's the kind of music you'll find on my channel. Okay? All right. Amen and amen. God bless. Thank you so much for those of you that listen to me a lot. Oh, yeah. If you want to bless my ministry financially, let me show you. Uh, you can send something to my Zelle. Now, I switched to Zelle because certain other apps were uh, taking money and holding up money and doing a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, we're not dealing with that. Zelle doesn't, do, Zelle doesn't do that. When you give through Zelle, the money comes straight through. There's no fees on your end and there's no fees on my end. So it's just a straight transfer and it's instant. You don't have to wait no two and three days. They don't take no money out. So if you want to bless me financially, uh, you can send it to my personal email, Zelle. And I appreciate that because of the money you send me. I just you know pour it back into ministry. So I thank you so much. God bless. Uh, don't forget to upvote this video, like the video. Don't forget to share it with as many people as you can. Because remember, I'm trying to increase my reach. When, when the spirit of God is moving and coming through with stuff like that, we want as many people as possible to see it. That's not about me. That's about hearing what the spirit of the Lord has to say to the church. Okay. Amen. God bless. I'll see you same time next week. And remember, God going to break them chains off of you in a violent and mighty way.